Welcome back guys, episode two. We got this little shed going. Today we're gonna have all walls up, everything tied together. I'm gonna show you how the walls tie together, how that California, that little L, ties corner to corner together. We're also gonna go over rake walls where the wall matches the rake of the roof. I'll show you guys how I do the math on that, calculate our top plates, everything in between. And by end of day, this thing should be looking more like a structure rather than a single wall. This wall didn't fall down. It's secured to a tree and a stake in the ground. It held up. So I want to show you guys how we calculate our rake walls, the top plates specifically, because it's something a lot of people get mixed up with. 108 and 3 quarter is our wall length in between the two exterior walls, our overall rake wall length. We're going to take that and divide it by two to split it straight down the center. That gives us 54 and 3 eighths twice. That's our run. So we're going to take that 54 and 3 eighths, punch it into our calculator here, 54 inch 3 eighths. We're gonna go ahead and hit run. We're building this with a 10 inch pitch, a 10 and 12 roof. So we're gonna hit 10 inch pitch. To figure out your top plate length, all you have to do now is hit that diagonal button. And you can see there that our top plate's gonna be 70 and three quarter. We'll cut four of these, and that's gonna be the rake wall top plate on both sides. T. No. It's framing day. Yeah, I'm framing. Do you like your hammer in your back pouch? Here it hits my damn knee. Ow, ow, ow. That's just kind of out of out of the way. Does it look funny? It does. Everybody look everybody says you look like you have a tail. Yeah, you look like a little dinosaur. Oh, he changed it up. Just a taste. Oh, nail. Wait. What number did you get? I got three quarter on that side. Five eight. How you use it. <laughs> Look at that. Then you can shrink it down. 
<laughs> we've got cold weather blower and we've got warm weather this thing blower. This a straight beast. No, no. It's nice to have like a little thing like that. There it is. So what we have going here is called a rake wall. A rake wall is simply a wall that follows the rake of the roof. We have a 10 and 12 roof here, a 40 degree pitch. These rake walls follow that 10 and 12 pitch. So when we go to set rafters up there, the rafters will sit right on top of that plate and there's no more work needed. Back in the good old days, what you'd see people do on their gable ends like this is frame the wall at nine foot or nine foot six in this case, flat across the top. Back in the day, the way that people would do it would be running all their plates flat not raking anything. It does take a little bit of time and you have to know what you're doing when it comes to calculating numbers for your rake wall. So they would run all their plates flat all the way around the building. They would stack out their roof and then just throw in some fillers underneath up to that rafter. This accomplishes the same thing, but does add extra steps. By doing a rake wall like this, you match the pitch of the roof and there's no more work needed once we stack the roof out. I'm doing two different ways of building out this rake wall. I wanted to show you guys the first way which is calculating all of my numbers in place, framing it on the ground itself, and then standing it up and putting it in place. The second method I'm gonna show you guys is a little bit easier and there's no math involved whatsoever. We're gonna put in the two studs on the side, put in the top plates, and then we have layout here on bottom plate. What we're gonna do is shoot with a laser up and get a markup on top plates. From there, all we have to do is butt the bottom plate up to the top plate and pull our numbers with a tape measure rather than doing all the math and calculating it. For now though, Let's talk about how to calculate those numbers over there to where you guys know how. So here's a little tip on rake walls. You can see that our plates match up killer up here, but you can see that the plate comes down. Therefore, this stud is actually shorter than this one. These are cut on a 40 right here, a 10 and 12. What you're gonna do is cut two of them, little trial piece, and measure from the long point to the short on that double. In this case, from here to there is four inches, but from here to here is three inches. So we have a one inch difference. We're gonna take that one inch off of our stud here, our starter stud, our base. So this stud number is 109 and a half. This stud number starts at 108 and a half at our short point. Now that we know our base number, 108 and a half, we can calculate the rest of our studs. So when you pull layout on any building that's getting sheathing or siding, you always wanna pull off the corner and go 16 to center. A lot of people make the mistake of pulling off of here and going 16 to center. But when you start a full sheet out here on this corner, you'll get to four feet and it won't break. But you go to four feet here, and it breaks perfectly. But back on topic with what we were talking about, we wanna figure out how to calculate these rake wall numbers. A lot of things in construction are based off of rise over run. Meaning our run is the distance from here to our layout mark. We have nine and a half. Our rise is the pitch. We have a 10 and 12 roof pitch here. So let's take those numbers that we just got and show you how to calculate and figure out the short point of the stud here. So as we talked about 108 and a half is what we're calling our base. And that's gonna be the short point. And we know that we're working with a 10 and 12 pitch, which is 40 degrees. Hooking our first stud, our base, to our next stud, we had a nine and a half inch run. And we have a 10 and 12 pitch. Now the way to do this is very simple. We're gonna go nine and a half inches. As we talked about, that's our run. We have a 10 and 12 pitch, so 10 inch pitch. You're gonna hit rise. So we have a seven and 15 sixteenths rise. We add that 108 and a half inch, 116 and 7 sixteenths is that first stud. Now here's where it gets easy. 116 and 7 sixteenths, that's our first stud in. Our second stud is a 16 inch run. So we'll do 16 inch run, 10 inch pitch, hit rise, 13 and 5 sixteenths. So now we have 116 and 7 sixteenths. This is where we're gonna pull everything off of because from here on out, it's 16 and go. So we're gonna take 116 and 7 sixteenths plus 13 and 5 sixteenths, and we're gonna hit enter. The next stud is 129 and three quarter. We're gonna hit enter again. 
143 and a 16th. We're going to hit enter again. 156 and 3 8 Enter again. 169 and 11 16 And what this is doing is adding that rise, that 13 and 5 16 on top of that number right there. So the first bay might be special, that nine and a half inch run, but from there on out, it's 16. So once you get this number right here, and you know that from there on out, it's 16 on center, all you have to do is calculate the rise once and add it to this and just hit equals over and over and over. And that'll give you the number every single time. As tall as the wall can get. Numbers don't lie. This is the easiest way to do it. So that is the easiest method I can give you guys on doing rake walls. When you have bigger walls that don't have four studs in them, that method works awesome. It's a simple process. You have to figure out your first stud. It's obviously gonna be shorter than the rest of your wall heights to where your plates match up. You have to get your second because most of the time that's gonna be a special bay. But once you have just a straight 16 and go run, you just do the same exact thing we just did. You do a 16 inch run, 10 inch pitch, hit your rise. That gave us 13 and 5 sixteenths. You add that to the second stud in. Hit equals over and over and over again. And it'll take you through every single stud number. And that's calced out to your short point. If you guys didn't catch on to what we were just doing, go to the description down below. I have everything typed out with an equation. You can do the math yourself. See if your numbers match mine. Once you do it a couple times, you're good to go. It's like riding a bike. Just be aware though, you can still fall on a bike no matter how good you are. The second way that I'm gonna show you guys is pretty much foolproof. This is probably the most typical way to frame a rake wall is shooting it with a laser or using a level to level up. A Little bit easier, not as much thinking goes into it. Let's get going on that. So we've got the front wrapped up. Everything's looking good. I've got these pieces in here, little trial pieces to see how I like it. This is gonna be a little dormer out here. Wall will come down, small 1-0 window across the front. It's gonna look really cool. It's not gonna let a whole lot of light in just due to how big the overhang is, but it will look nice. To end out the day, we've got the rafters on the backside here that I wanna take care of, get everything straightened out, throw those in and finish up. It's fun up here though. We built this little makeshift scaffold. We have a two by 12 running this way over there and some planks across in order to get around safely. And since this little place is built completely custom, we have no plans. There's really nothing we're going off of for it aside from a Pinterest picture the owner showed us. We kind of get to have fun with it and make it our own. But let's get these back rafters up.
Today we covered a couple things, and I'm glad we got to cover them. We got to cover rake wall building, we got to cover two different methods of doing it, such as using a laser from the ground, shooting up, marking up top, measuring with a tape measure, and then we did the same method but with the calculator, showing you how to do it that way. And if you didn't get what we were talking about during that whole process, I do have the whole entire layout of how we calculated our run, rise, pitch, all that in the description down below. We were working on the shear panel here out front just before calling it quits. Tomorrow, they'll wrap up the shear in the front, fascia around the thing, prep it for roof sheathing. And the dormer up here, we agreed that it would be best if we leave the whole thing open there like a skylight. Once the roof is sheeted, come back, plate it, frame some walls, and stack that little thing out on top. But I'm gonna head on out, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, thumbs up, subscribe button down below. Any questions in the comments? And I'll see you guys later. Bang on.